Hare Krishna, my name is Vyasaki Das. Srila Prabhupada played the harmonium on so many tapes. We've heard the beautiful bhajans of Narottam Das Thakur and Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and many of us have probably wanted to play the harmonium the way Srila Prabhupada did. And Srila Prabhupada also wanted us to learn to play the harmonium properly in an authorized way. By the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, I was able to perform a little service in Mayapur Dam. While there, I traveled through many villages in Bangladesh and in Bengal, and there I was able to learn something about the Vedic style of playing harmonium. So I've been asked to give a series of lessons about what I've learned. Hopefully by the end of this series, you also will be able to play authentic Hare Krishna melodies and bhajans of the Acharyas in the same way that Srila Prabhupada did. So first, let's get to the basics. In every system of music, we find there are 12 notes. And in the Vedic system, it's categorized as follows. Seven notes are called Shuddha, which means that they are pure notes. They never change. Four notes are called Komal, and one note is called Tibra. The Komal and the Tibra notes, they are changing, as I will explain just now. The seven Shuddha notes are as follows. Sa -re -ga -ma -pa -dha -ni -sa then we have the four Komal notes. Komal notes are designated by the line underneath the notation. So, for example, Komal Re is played like this. Re becomes Komal Re. Ga becomes Komal Ga. Dha becomes Komal Dha. Ni becomes Komal Ni. So all the Komal notes are one step down. The Tibra Ma is played this way. Ma becomes Tibra Ma. And that takes care of all of the 12 notes in the octave. And every octave is the same, has the same notes, whether higher or lower. So that takes care of every note you ever want to know. Now there's three octaves that we want to deal with in the harmonium. There's the lower octave called Udara, the middle octave called Mudara, and the high octave called Tara. And the notation is as follows. For all of the notes in the lower octave, we designate that by putting a dot below each note. The mudara or middle octave, they have no dot. And for the tara or high octaves, we put a dot above. Here on the harmonium, you can see the three different octaves. This is the lower octave, the udara octave, and then this section here is the middle octave, the mudar octave, and then the top notes are the tara octave, the high notes. The next thing we're going to do is play through the notes on the harmonium. Sa, re, ga, ma, pa, ta, ni, sa. You can notice that this high sa from the tara octave has a dot upon it. So all notes higher than that will also have dots on them. Proper fingering is very important if we want to learn the harmonium correctly. Here we have a chart showing which finger should be played with which note. First finger goes on the sa. Second finger on the re. Thumb on the ga. Then the first on the ma, second finger on the pa, third finger on ta, thumb on ni, and then again on the tara sa, the high note sa, again the first finger. So we'll play that together. Sa, first finger on the sa, second finger on the re, Thumb on the ga, first finger on ma, 
Second finger on the pa. Third finger on the ta. Thumb on the mi. And on the high sa, first finger. So now we're going to do a little practice. The Vedic system of practice is very nice because we learn to sing and play the harmonium simultaneously. So we'll sing these notes and also play them. Sa singing up the scale, this is called in Sanskrit Arohi, singing up, and singing down the scale is called Abarohan. Next, we're going to do our first exercise so that we will get practice playing the harmonium and singing the notes together. In the beginning, we'll sing Sare Gama Padani Sa, but eventually we'll be singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, like that. So this is how the exercise goes. We sing the Arohi and the Avarohan, one after the other. In the beginning, four beats per note, then two beats per note, then one beat per note, then one half of a beat per note, finally one quarter of a beat per note. And I'll demonstrate how this is done. First we'll do it four beats to the note. So Two beats to the note. Sa and now one beat per note. Sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga re sa Next we'll do half a beat per note which means two notes per beat Sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga re sa sa re ga ma pa And finally, one quarter beat per note or four notes to the beat. And then back to four beats per note again. And you perform this over and over again, and one will learn not only the fingering, and not only one, one, will one become very familiar with playing the harmonium, but simultaneously you'll develop a very nice singing voice. A good exercise is to play the scale right across the whole keyboard, from the lower octave to the middle, right to the very top, like this. Gradually, you'll be able to do it quickly, like this. Now, 
Now we're going to take the same scale that we've just practiced and we're going to put the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra to it as follows. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So in this lesson, we've already learned a little bit about the harmonium, the Vedic system of notation, how to finger the notes and to chant them up the scale and down the scale. And also we've learned to utilize that to practice a very simple Hare Krishna melody. Now in the forthcoming lessons, we're going to expand upon all this and get deeper into the science of chanting and playing the harmonium according to the Vedic system. Jai, Gaur Hari Wal. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Hare Krishna, this is lesson number two. And we're going to introduce two new concepts. Tal, which is rhythm, and alankar, which means ornament or embellishment. Rhythm is very important because we have to learn to play in time so that we can play with other instruments. And also the alankar is very important because through the alankars we learn how to make the music very musical. All of the melodies that we know are made up of the alankars, so when we learn the alankars it will be very, very easy to pick up any melody at will. So the first alankar we, we will learn is as follows. I have here in groups of three, sa re ga Re ga ma, ga ma pa, ma pa da, pa da ni, da ni sa. This is the arohi going up, and I will play this for you now so you can hear what it sounds like. First, I'll do it very slowly. Sa re ga, re ga ma, ga ma pa, ma pa da, pa da ni, da ni sa. And then going down, the Abarahan is like this. Sa ni da ni da pa da pa ma pa ma ga ma ga re ga re sa. Eventually, we want to be able to do this more smoothly and quickly, so it sounds like this. Sa re ga re ga ma ga ma pa ma pa da pa da ni da ni sa sa ni da ni da pa da pa ma pa ma ga ma ga re ga re sa. So this is the first alankar that we're learning. So we should practice this together now. If you have your harmonium, try and get it out, and we'll do it together. Sa re ga re ga ma ga ma pa ma pa da pa da ni da ni. Don't forget that it's very important to remember the fingering, that the right fingers go on the right notes. And also to sing out very nicely. Sing these notes out with full breath and with full vim, vigor and vitality because the idea is that by doing this you'll be able to improve your singing voice. This is the theory behind it. We're learning not only how to play the harmonium, but also how to sing. So if you practice this particular alankar over and over again, you, your fingers will become very, very accustomed to playing on the harmonium, and automatically they will go to the right notes. Now we can utilize what we've learned in this alankar 
by playing a very simple Krishna Hare Krishna melody that was Srila Prabhupada's favorite. <laughs> If you watch very closely, you'll see how my fingers are playing this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare important thing is practice. Just as in every other phase of devotional service, one must practice and do it nicely so that one becomes expert. Similarly, we should, when we have some time, we should go over these alankars regularly so that we become very familiar with them. So the end result will be that we will be able to play the harmonium very nicely and guests who come to the temple will be very much attracted by the singing and chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. Jai Srila Prabhupada. Hari Yo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This is lesson number three. Today we'll go deeper into the concept of alankars and we'll learn two other alankars. Here I've written them down on the card. These are a grouping of four. And of course you'll remember this sa, re, ga, ma. I've dropped the vowel sound on each one just for a simplification. So we'll practice this again and again to become proficient in the use of fingering and singing on the harmonium. But of course it's important to remember that what we want to learn is to play the harmonium and to chant Hare Krishna and that this is just the foundation for doing that not that we want to become expert in chanting Sargam so I'll demonstrate how this Alankar is played This will require a little bit of practice because although it may sound easy, it is not very easy as it sounds. So it will require a little bit of practice to get it smoothly and to get the voice 
and the sargams together. So try and remember that one. Write it down so that you can practice it nicely. Going up the Arohi and coming down again the Avarohan. So I'll sing this again now and you'll look on the card to see how this is done. Sare Gama Re Gama Pa Gama Pa Da Ma Pa Da Ni Pa Da Ni Sa Sa Ni Da Pa Ni Da Pa Ma Da Pa Ma Ga Pa Ma Ga Re Ma Ga Re Sa So that was the alankar with four notes to a grouping. So you practice that and try and get the rhythm nicely, four notes per group. And also now in this lesson I will show you another alankar where we have five notes per group, as is written on this card. Five notes per grouping. Sa re ga ma pa, re ga ma pa da, ga ma pa da ni, ma pa da ni sa. This is the Arohi going up. And also, coming down, the Abrahan is the same. So we'll run that over together now. Sa re ga ma pa re ga ma pa da ga ma pa pa da ni ma pa da ni sa ani da pa ma ni da pa ma ga When one becomes proficient at this, it will sound more rhythmic like this. So we can now chant a new Hare Krishna melody, which will incorporate everything that we've learned up to this time. Starting with the high sa, tara sa. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. So in this lesson, we've learned a little bit about the different tals. We've learned how to do the alankars with four notes per grouping and how to do with five per grouping. So the idea is that we want to get the fingers more accustomed to playing the notes in various groups, in various arrangements, and also to get a nice rhythm, a smooth rhythm going through it all the while. Jai Sri Prabhupada. Hari Hari Bol. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, this is lesson number four. Today we're going to introduce a new concept, the concept of Raga. Of course, you may be knowing that Ragas are the integral part of Indian music.
or Vedic music. And I'll explain today what the raga is. Here we have some ragas listed. The first raga, number one, Bilabal. This is the equivalent to the major scale in Western music, and that's the raga that we've been doing all our alankars with in the previous three lessons. So we have the notes Sa Re Gama Pa Da Ni Sa, the pure or shuddha notes. So going up, the arohi, and coming down, avarohan, they comprise the raga known as bilabol. Bilabol raga. But today, we're going to introduce another raga, Kamaj, which is different, quite different. Let me show you the difference. <clears throat> we hear, going up, we have the same as the Bilabal rag, Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, Ni, Sa. But coming down, we have a different situation. The Ni changes to a Komal Ni. So going down, the Abarohan is sa komo ni da pa ma ga re sa. So that means that every time we're going up, we're using an avarohi scale, we hit the shudha ni. And every time we come down, we have to play the komo ni. And that sounds like this. Sa re ga ma pa da ni. Notice the difference in the sound of the knee? If you didn't, I'll play it again. <laughs> now I'll play a Hare Krishna melody using this Kamaj rag. This rag is called Kamaj, if you want to write it in your notebook. And it goes like this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, This raga has a slightly different mood because of the kamoli coming down gives it a different mood. So now what we would like to do is we would like to practice the alankars that we learned previously in the other lessons. We want to practice them now within the kamaj rag rather than the bilabal rag. So for example, we had the alankar of triplets. Sa re ga re ga ma ga ma pa ma pa da pa da ni da ni sa sa ni da ni da pa da pa ma pa ma ga ma ga re ga re sa. So I hope that you know that quite well now if you've practiced. So that particular alankar which we just did in the bilabal rag, now we will do the same thing again in the kamaj rag, and you'll be able to hear the difference. Sa re ga re ga ma ga ma pa ma pa da pa da ni da ni sa sa ni da ni da pa da pa ma pa ma ga ma ga re ga re sa. So here on this card, 
we see the notation for the alankar that we just did in the Kamaj Rag. You remember this alankar of triplets. Except on the Avarahan, going down, we have Komalni in these two places, which gives a whole different mood to this alankar. That's due to the Raga, the Kamaj Raga. So I'll play that again so you can uh, become familiar with it. So what I would like you to do now is to practice the other alankars that you learned in previous weeks in this new raga of Kamaj Rag. If you didn't jot them down in your notebook previously, I suggest that you rewind the tape to that lesson and then get them down so that you can make the proper correction of the Komal Ni so that you can play the alankars in the new raga. So now I'll show you the Hare Krishna melody in the rag Kamaj. As we did it earlier, we'll practice that same one again. If you've been following the lessons and practicing a little bit, you should be able to pick up that raga simply by hearing, because all the alankars are there and everything is there that you've already learned, and it should be a very simple matter to learn the raga. If you find that you have difficulty learning this Hare Krishna melody, then I, it probably is due to the fact that you haven't practiced enough and you should go back and learn these alankars more fully. Because the end result, when you know your alankars, is that you can simply hear a melody once or twice, and you can capture it and play it on the harmonium. So I hope you got the benefit of this lesson, and that you understood it all right, and you'll give it some time to practice. All glories to Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, this is lesson number five. Today, we're going to get into a few more alankars. These may be a bit more difficult than before, but if you've been practicing, you should have no difficulty learning these. You can see this alankar, sa ga re ma ga pa ma da pa ni da sa, the arohi, and coming down, the reverse. So I'll play that now, and you can hear what that sounds like. I'll do it slowly at first, and then a little bit quicker. So this alankar is used very, very frequently in harmonium playing. It's a very, very important uh, alankar, and it should be practiced uh, quite regularly. This particular alankar is very useful to use over all three octaves of the harmonium, which I'll show you right now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now we want to repeat that alankar, and we want you to watch very closely at the fingering so you get an idea how the fingers are placed. If you've been having some difficulty with the fingering up to now, then it might be wise to go back to the earlier lessons and practice that so that you get it smoothly. Otherwise, if you've been having no difficulty, it means that you're making nice progress, and that's very pleasing. So have a look at the fingering, then we'll do it real slowly to see how we can do this. philosophy of fingering runs something like this, that in the beginning the student is always requested to place a certain finger on a certain note. And by doing this, after a short period of time, he gradually becomes proficient and his fingers become very accustomed to playing the different notes. And therefore, it's very simple for his fingers to then play any note whatsoever. Sometimes we find that in the various alankars it's almost impossible to have the right finger in this, on the right note according to the earlier lessons. It's here that we have to make some adjustment. And when one becomes proficient, it's very easy for him to make that adjustment. The fingers become very relaxed and very limber on the keyboard, and so there's no difficulty. If there is some difficulty, then perhaps the fingers are not limber enough, and we would recommend that you play these alankars more often. However, generally, uh, we would find that the fingers are able to adapt without too much difficulty. So as far as this last alankar is concerned, and what we can do now is we can play this alankar all throughout the whole keyboard of the harmonium as follows. <laughs> So that can also be practiced. Now, another nice practice to do throughout the whole keyboard is just playing the, the rag bilabo continuously up and then continuously down. Sounds like this. So with a little bit of practice, you should very easily be able to accomplish these exercises. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Haribo. This is lesson number six, and today we'll be looking at a new raga. This raga is called in Hindi, Yaman, and in Bengali, Iman. I'm giving both names so that if one comes across either a Bengali or a Hindi gentleman, that you'll be able to correctly pronounce the raga, and he won't be confused. So over here in the card, we can see number three, rag Iman, or Yaman. And here, we can understand the difference between this rag and the other rags. This is the tibrama that we discussed earlier. Sa re ga tibrama padha ni sa. All the other notes are shuddha and tibrama. Going up and coming down, this rag is the same. And it would sound something like this. Sa re ga ma padha ni sa. Did you notice any difference 
in the sound of this raga. I'll play you the Bilabal raga, and then I'll play you Iman raga immediately afterwards, so you can hear the difference. Sa -de -ga -ma -pa -da -ni -sa -sa Now Iman Rag. difference, of course, is in the ma. Sa de ga ma. Instead of sa de ga ma, which is what we're accustomed to hearing. So now what we would like to do is to review the alankars from the second lesson and the third lesson and to play those alankars in the iman rag. On this card, we have the alankar, which we're already familiar with. Except for this case of Iman Rag, we see the Tibra Ma inserted. So I will play this Alankar now with the Tibra Ma, which gives the melodic quality of the Iman Rag. Sa -re -ga -re -ga -ma -ga -ma -pa -ma -pa If you listen closely, you could hear the difference between this rendering of the Alankar in the Iman Rag and previous renderings. In this Iman Rag, Prabhupada's famous melody of Hare Krishna can also be played. Hare Krishna. If you are listening carefully, you will have noticed the different quality of this melody in the Iman Raga. By singing it in this Raga, we get a distinctive Eastern or Oriental flavor, whereas the same melody sung in the Bilabal Raga, which we did earlier, gives a Western flavor. In order to fully appreciate this Raga, now you should go back and learn all the Alankars that we've previously played, but play them with the Tibra Ma. So you become very familiar with the Iman Raga, with the sound of the Iman Raga. Next, I want to introduce a very, very popular Iman melody in Bengal. You might have heard this one previously, and I'll sing it now, and you should be able to pick it up quite easily. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. So here, in this raga, we can hear the distinctive quality that the Tibra Ma is giving. 
So this is the Iman Raga, and it's very distinctive. Each and every Raga has its own specific quality. And when we become familiar with them, we're able to recognize that Raga. And every Raga has many, many different melodies. There are almost unlimited melodies for each Raga. And each Raga also has a particular mood of its own. So all the melodies in that Raga have a, a particular mood. So this Iman Raga is an evening Raga and can be played around the time of sunset. So simply this system of Raga which comes from the Vedas is, is very scientific and it's broken down for every hour of the day. Different moods are there. Jai, glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Are you ready for lesson number seven? Today we're going to really get into the nectar. We're going to introduce rag kafi. This is a raga that most of our acharyas wrote their songs. So I'll just give you the raga and then we'll get into some of those songs. So we have this raga, we have komal ga and komal ni. Going up and going down, it's the same. So it sounds like this. Sa So I'll play that again. So one of the most popular melodies, one of the songs that have made, has made Bhakti Vinod very famous is Jai Radha Madhav. So we can do that song in this raga. If you just follow along with us, it goes like this. And uh, we can use that same melody to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> 